Make a joyful noise unto the Lord all the lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Sing with joy unto the Lord. Know the Lord is God, and we are every one God's creations. Let us serve the Lord with joy and lift our voices in praise. Bless the name of the Lord. Let us pray. On this Thanksgiving Sunday, dear Lord, we are so very aware of our blessings and are grateful beyond measure for warm rains in the morning and cool breezes in the evening, for work that provides for our families and abundance that makes us generous, we say. Thank you, dear Lord, for faithful mentors and loving friends, for employers with generous hearts and teachers with patient spirits, for doctors, for nurses, and others who protect our health. We say thank you, dear Lord, for family members who've helped form us, for the pets who enrich our lives, and for folks who make our day with their spirit of joy, we say thank you, dear Lord. And for this day, for all who have gathered here in your name, for the presence of your Holy Spirit among us, we say thank you, dear Lord. Amen. Uh, Ann Ballard has graciously consented to uh, present our scripture this morning. And I want to add one thing. If you're reading the scripture out of the bulletin, you'll notice that, and everybody's familiar with uh, the parable of the five talents, and I think the way it's worded in the, in the, in the, in the uh, uh, bulletin is uh, the parable of the five bags or five sacks of gold. So that may... Uh, deviate from what we're used to, but Ann is used to the five talents, and most of us are, so she's going to do the five talents for us this morning. Thank you. The gospel is taken from the book of Matthew, chapter 25, verses 14 through 30. For it will be as when a man going on a journey called his servants and entrusted to them his property. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. He who had received the five talents went at once and traded with them and he made five talents more. So also he who had the two talents made two talents more. But he who had received the one talent went and dug in the ground and hid his master's money. Now, after a long time, the master of those servants came and settled accounts with them. And he who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five tablets more, saying, Master, you delivered to me five talents. Here I have made five talents more. His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a little. I will set you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. And he also who had the two talents came forward saying, Master, you delivered to me two talents. Here I have made two talents more. His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a little. I will set you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. He also who had received the one talent came forward saying, Master, I knew you to be a hard man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you did not winnow. So I was afraid and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here you have what is yours. But his master answered him, 
You wicked and slothful servant, you knew that I reap where I have not sowed and gather where I have not winnowed. Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers, and at my coming I should have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to him who has the ten talents. For to everyone who has will be given more, and he will have abundance. But from him who has not, even what he has will be taken away. And cast the worthless servant into the utter darkness. There men will weep and gnash their teeth. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Our affirmation of faith this morning is the Apostles' Creed, which is printed in your bulletin. And I ask that as you are able, please stand and affirm your faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. My message this morning is entitled, No ROI. If you saw that on the sign out front, it may have been mysterious to you, but it's, it's return on investment. No return on investment. And it's based on the uh, gospel that Ann read earlier, Matthew 25, 14 to 30, the uh, parable of the talents. Now, all my life, I've had difficulty with that parable. I, I don't know if anybody else has found difficulty with it, but I certainly have when I, when I look into it, when I read it over, and I say, you know, this just doesn't make sense. You know, I find myself being sympathetic at times toward even relating to the slave who was given one talent. Now, I understand that this parable, like the parable of the bridesmaids and the parable of the sheep and the goats, and, and, and these parables deal with attitudes and behaviors in the face of the coming of the Son of Man. Now, recall that the ten bridesmaids were awaiting the arrival of the bridegroom. Five of these bridesmaids had oil in their lamps, and while the other five had no oil, those without oil went off to purchase some. And while they were gone, the bridegroom arrived. The five bridesmaids who had been prepared accompanied him into the wedding banquet. And the door to the banquet hall was then shut and locked. And when the other five returned, they were not permitted to enter. Now the parable of the sheep and the goats, you'll recall, seems to suggest that the doing of good works is evidence of salvation. Remember those compared to the sheep acted in charity giving to the needy food, drink, and clothing, and those compared to the goats did not. Now getting back to the parable of the talents, we find that the master, preparing to go on a journey, entrusted three slaves with a specific number of talents. The first slave he entrusted with five talents, which is roughly 30,000 denarii, each denarii being roughly equivalent to one day's wages for a laborer. Now, I did a little math and discovered that five talents were about 82 years' wages for a laborer. Quite a significant sum. The second slave received two denarii, and the third received one. Now, clearly, this parable refers to Christ as the master who tells his disciples that for a while I'll leave you, but I will return. 
Now upon his return, the Lord wished to see just what his disciples, his servants, had done with the talents, the gifts that he had given them. Now the first two servants invested wisely and did indeed receive a substantial return on their investment of their master's money. But the actions of the third slave and the reactions of the Lord upon learning what he had done has always been puzzling to me. We hear all the time about the economic effects of the collapse of the banking industry that preceded the Great Depression in the early 20th century. People who lost fortunes, as well as those who lost their meager savings, no longer trusted banks and other financial institutions. And I'll give you an example. When I was a a young loan officer at Old Point National Bank, I had an older depositor who would come in on Monday morning and ask to see his money. Ask to see his money. And I got a kick out of that when it first happened, but after a while, Bob Shuford, who was our bank president at the time, told me, no, he's been doing this for years and years. He lost a lot of money during the Depression, and he just wants to make sure it's safe. That wasn't a, wasn't a hard thing to ask. So that's an example of how people feel about lending institutions in many cases. Now many actually hid their money. Some of them stuffed it into a mattress and we hear about people who buried it in the backyard in a coffee can. This risk averse action certainly resulted in no return on investment. No ROI. So was the third slave so in fear of his master that he didn't want to risk what had been entrusted to him. When the master asked what the slave had done with the single talent he had given him, he told his master that he had hidden his talent in the ground. Why? Why? Because he regarded his master as a harsh man, reaping where he did not sow and gathering where he didn't scatter seed. So now, the statement that always captured my attention was when the slave uttered these words, I was afraid. I was afraid. The slave may also have questioned, why were the others entrusted with more than I? And if my master regarded my abilities as less valuable, perhaps he didn't expect as much out of me. I've often wondered, given the same circumstances as this third slave, how would I have behaved? What would I have done had the master given me the smaller amount? Would I have been afraid of disappointing the master? Would I have been afraid that if I had not wisely invested my master's money and lost it, he would retaliate against me? How would my master respond? Now let's step out of this parable and into our reality. Our master, God, has entrusted each and every one of us with talents and with gifts. These gifts are many and varied, and some may not even be recognizable on the surface, but they're there nonetheless. And what our master expects of us is that we discover them and that we use them. We often tend to think of gifts and talents as those abilities we have that may profit ourselves or may profit others. But far beyond that, The talents God has blessed us with are those that help grow and strengthen God's kingdom on earth. Exercising the talents and the gifts we've been given sometimes involves risk. Risk that we may fail. Or risk that we may not live up to the expectations of our master. Now the first two slaves in our parable were willing to take that risk, weren't they? The third slave, however, out of fear of failure, chose to do nothing. As God's servant people, we must be willing to take the risk. We must develop the talents with which we were entrusted. I'm reminded of one of the most famous Major League Baseball players in history, Babe Ruth, George Herman Ruth. And the Babe hit a a record 714 career home runs. 714 home runs during his career. And when asked how it felt to have achieved this remarkable success, he was quick to point out that he also held the record for the most strikeouts in a career. 
1,330, 1,330 strikeouts, a record number of attempts to hit the ball and failed to do so. You know, Babe Ruth made an incredible use of the talent that God gave him, but where would he have been had he not been willing to risk swinging that bat? Now, the story is likewise told of Thomas Edison, who was certainly no stranger to failure. It had been reported that Edison failed over 6,000 times before perfecting the first electric light bulb. Over 6,000 times before perfecting that first electric light bulb. On one occasion, a young journalist challenged Edison, saying to him, Mr. Edison, why do you keep trying to make light by using electricity when you failed so many times? Don't you know that gas lights are with us to stay? <laughs> to this, Edison replied, young man, don't you realize that I have not failed, but I have successfully discovered 6,000 ways that won't work? Wish I was that quick on my feet. <laughs> because Edison believed an electric light was possible, he refused to give up. On October 21st, 1879, after 13 months of repeated failures, Edison finally succeeded in finding a filament that would work, and the light bulb was born. What if Edison had never tried to use the gifts that God had given him for fear of failure? Had he not been a man of faith, perseverance, and determination, we may still be working by gaslight, or at least it may have been many years before the first electric light was born. We must never let fear of failure prevent us from exercising the talents that God has entrusted us with. Never let our fear cause us to live a life of no return on investment, no return on God's investment in us. After all, what's the worst that could happen? What's the worst that could happen? We've heard it said that it's far better to have tried and failed than never to have tried. My question to you this morning is this. What are you doing with the talent that has been entrusted to you? I have to believe that there's someone, someone in this congregation who's been given the talent to sing. Certainly not me but refuses to exercise that talent for fear that they may not be good enough. Think about it. I believe that there's someone in this congregation who has the talent to deliver the message on Sunday morning, but for whatever reason would rather not try. I believe that in our congregation we can find all the spiritual gifts found listed in the Bible. For example, in Romans, we're told that there are gifts of exhortation or comforting. There are gifts of giving. There are gifts of leadership, of mercy, of prophecy, of service, of teaching. All of these gifts. In 1 Corinthians, we find the gift of administration, the gift of discernment, the gift of faith, the gift of healing, the gift of helps the gift of knowledge, the gift of miracles, and the gift of wisdom, all of these gifts. In Ephesians, we're told of the gifts of evangelism and pastoring. So again, my question is this, what do you fear? What are you afraid of? God has entrusted you with gifts, with talent, Maybe five talents, maybe two, maybe one, but he's made a precious investment in you and is counting on you to provide a return on that investment. He is trusting you not to bury the talent he's given you, but to take the risk, identify it, use it, invest it, and bring to God the increase. Amen. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the broad expanse of God's love and the abundance of his riches and glory shape your perspective 
on your own life and needs, including those things which disappoint you. May the eyes of your heart be open to all the blessings which surround you. May this awareness produce a harvest of generosity in your spirit. May thankfulness rise up within you, not just during this short season, but day after day from the early morning until you retire for the night. May your prayers reflect gratitude while also acknowledging the needs of others whose situations are so drastically different. May thoughts of Jesus fill your mind and hunger for God, drive your soul and love for Lord, guide your speech and your actions. And finally, may the grace, peace, and love of the triune God protect, defend, and empower you to run with perseverance the race marked out for you. Amen. Amen.